everyone, and welcome to the show. This is technically my first foray into, well, anything showbiz. When I was a hatchling, I was in a tribal play about a rich snake who is too greedy to give back to his community. I think you humans have a version of this about... Wait, who was it? Um, I think it was a duck? I'm pretty sure it was a duck. The duck's name was Scrooge, right? Yeah, it was about a duck. I think? Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to improv and I'm, yeah, I'm falling off the rails. Or er, falling off track? I really don't get how you guys work, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to get used to your metaphors? Metaphors? Why do you call them metaphors? Why is the poor meta? I really don't understand you lot. I'm doing it again, I'm sorry. Um, a lot of people like to make cobblestone generators, but did you know you could get more bang for your buck Give me a Monday. by building a smooth stone generator instead? Oh, you ask, when lava and water concrete... Hmm, that was a mistake. How do you... How you ask... Oh my god, I'm so terrible at this. How you ask when lava and water create smooth stone? Well, if the children watching are advanced enough in their mathematics, they know why. Orientation matters. There are four quadrants. There's the positive quadrant, the negative quadrant, the negative positive quadrant, and the positive negative quadrant. You know how this works. It's grids, you know? So, anyway, let's cover the basics of lava and water. This beast comes out when it is 25 degrees below zero. Okay, here is a demonstration level of the weird mechanics of lava. As we mentioned before, lava is directional, and this level provides a lot of information you'll need to make your stone generator. Perhaps you don't care about smooth stone and just want cobble? That is your choice, children. My style wishes for smooth stone and double entendres. Wait, what? Oh, God. Multiple uses. I'm sorry, your language confuses the heck out of me. Nonetheless, you can read through these books with additional explanations. But do understand, if you're watching this YouTube video, perhaps your learning style is auditory. Some children wish to read the details. That's why this demo is made the way it is. So for the mining miners among you who like to dig into the weird shape of your strange language, I made books for you. Wow. Isn't that cool? Look, they have lots of weird shapes. I'm sorry, I'm just... I don't know. You guys love your shapes. I really love that you guys love your shapes. It's really cool. You guys really love the shapes. Like the, the weird A and the number four. I hear there's so many ways to write the number four. It's so weird. Anyway, they're not that, that silly book from the desert that we all love, but please don't listen to him. He's the bad snake, I'm the good snake. But let's start with cobblestone, okay? Now, here's a demonstration of a cobblestone generator. Obviously, this is not optimal. One would want all the cobble to pop upward after all, right? That's, that's the whole point of a stone generator. You have to pick at all of the stone. But this is basic and limited on resources for a reason. Not only is it a demonstration, but it's also to demonstrate what if you're in a pinch, you know? You know, what if you don't really have the resources to build a giant machine? Well, this still works, it's just slow. But it still works. Either way, uh, press the button, let the lava escape, and it eventually becomes cobble. <laughs> yes. Note though, why is the lava set two blocks away from the water divot and not one block? Well, lesson two explains why. The text explains why obsidian generators in particular are quite difficult to create, but as you can see, getting too close to the water actually turns your lava source block into obsidian, and you don't want that if you're trying to make stone, because, well, as the tomes I've written state, lava is directional. We know how to make cobblestone, and most folks understand this one, but how does one generate smooth stone? Well, that's easy. 
you fall down from heaven. You know, you come in from above. What happens when the lava comes down from above? Ah, wonderful. Clever kids in my audience will be squinting with curiosity at this one. Well, what if the water comes in from above instead, you clever boys and girls? And Kids whose pronouns don't exist in your language. Why is that? What's going on there? Did you guys know that your species hates people who are intersex? Anyway, that's, that's not my point. But the question is a good question. What if the water comes in from above? Because as we've stated, if the water and lava are directional with how they create stone, would it not then follow that there is perhaps another means of generating stones? In logic, a class that sadly kept from you until college, why is that? Kids program, kids understand the logic, you know this, you know this. Why don't they teach you formal logic until college? I do not understand your species. Anyway, the fourth lesson is what's called proof by contradiction, I think. I'm unsure what I'm contradicting with this one in particular, but, well, it's something along those lines, I think. I don't know, snakes aren't very good with logic. We're simply silly serpents. But, well, let's take a look. What happens when water comes in from above, and not lava? See? Well, unfortunately, you just don't know until you try. Now that we've covered all the different pieces of how cobble and smooth stone generate, Let's cover a simple smooth stone generating machine. McDonald's is a place to rock. It is a restaurant where they buy food to eat. It is a good place to listen to the music. People flock here to get down to the rock music. Rock and roll McDonald's! I apologize for doing the American Mathematics book thing and giving you examples followed by an implementation that makes no sense. But this is why I'm here to explain. Unfortunately, while this is technically a redstone tutorial, there are pieces in this machine I haven't taught you. And I'm very sorry for that. But I am going to teach you about these individual pieces here today, so don't worry about that. But do keep in mind, Mumbo Jumbo is your redstone expert. Don't worry about PewDiePie. Subscribe to Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbo Jumbo has the redstone. But I'm simply living in the nature of whichever seed I find myself in. His 10-minute redstone tutorial is essential. A brilliant hacker of sorcery of redstone. Believe me. Take it from me. A snake of learn from the best of London. I'll be happy to explain the individual pieces, though. Here is what we call a redstone clock. As you can see, this torch sends a signal to this repeater, to this repeater, to this repeater, and so on, until the signal comes back. This lever right here controls whether or not the clock is on. Let us let it run for a moment while it generates the stone. Okay. Neat, right? But how is it doing that? As per lesson 3, two lava source blocks spread apart over water. The lava blocks are placed in the center rather than on the sides to prevent the water source block from being completely blocked off. This way, the smooth stone is generated in an even and distributed fashion. These repeaters here make sure to push the generated smooth stone forward. Let's go underneath to see what the next steps are. When a block is strongly charged, blocks underneath it are powered, as you can see here as the clock makes its rounds. These redstone repeaters are set to a four tick delay in order to time the movement of the blocks properly. These pistons push the blocks up just after the prior pistons push them forward as well. And now the moment you've been waiting for. Aren't those furnaces? What, are we cooking or something? Are we cooking a stone? What's going on there? Why'd I do that? Well, kids, there are just some blocks in Minecraft you can't push, and it's upsetting sometimes, but either way, here I've used both. 
for technical reasons, actually. Here, I've chosen to use furnaces. It's both more aesthetically pleasing in this context and less resource-intensive than an obsidian. By that, I mean the obsidian consumes your time, whereas the furnaces consume your stone. Depending on your state of resources, you'll just have to pick which trade-off to take. But as we go upstairs, you can see that there are six rows of smooth stone here. But don't worry, I know that six can be scary, but remember, it doesn't mean demons to the kids who love their desert book. Remember that we're in Minecraft. Here in Minecraft, six is how many blocks high you can mine without needing a pillar. This is why I placed a little notch at the seventh row of the obsidian. Now you might wonder why I chose to use obsidian here rather than furnaces. Don't mind how faster the more upgrades you give your pickaxes, and you don't want to break the wall after all. Sometimes one doesn't wish to buy his participation, you know? I was referring to the stage. Do you see what I did there? And now we're at the end of our video. I apologize for my horrible microphone, children, but it's a bad thing hiding my stuff! So incredibly upset at Hopefully you understand what I'm saying, and hopefully you learned a lot today. I feel one of you nodding right now, and this makes me quite happy to hear. Magic is strange, isn't it? The desert book is magical, too, after all. <laughs> Goodbye, please subscribe, I'll do my best to make more videos for you. Yeah.